Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we're going to be comparing the all-new iPhone 5 against Samsung's Galaxy S3. And before we get started, I just wanted to say that I'm going to keep this review as unbiased as possible, and we're kind of just going to go over a couple of things with both devices and do a comparison between the two to maybe help you guys decide which phone better suits you. So when looking at these two smartphones, the difference is immediately noticeable. First of all, we have the iPhone 5 over here on the right and the Galaxy S3 over here on the left. Now the S3 has a plastic type construction, whereas the iPhone 5 is made completely out of aluminum and glass. So we have a higher build quality over here with the iPhone 5, whereas Samsung chose a different approach with the Galaxy S3. Now I am going to say that it feels a little bit cheaper because of this plastic than the iPhone 5, which again has aluminum and glass, and it feels more sturdy. That being said, the Galaxy S3 is surprisingly light for its size. And that leads into my next point. Even though the iPhone 5 is both thinner and lighter than the Galaxy S3, it has a bigger display. So it's somewhat surprising that the Galaxy S3 weighs as little as it does in spite of its plastic design. So as I mentioned, the Galaxy S3 has a bigger 4-inch display, whereas the iPhone 5 still has a 4-inch display measuring diagonally, but Apple decided just to increase its size vertically to add complete one-handed usability and an HD 16 to 9 aspect ratio to the device. And of course, that's one of the things that I like about the iPhone 5 as opposed to the S3 is the fact that it's much easier to use with one hand. But it all comes down to preference whether or not you want a phone with a bigger display that's somewhat harder to use with one hand, or you want a phone with a somewhat smaller 4-inch display that's incredibly easy to use with one hand and has an HD 16 to 9 aspect ratio. And with that said, let's get into some of our tests between these two smartphones. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the browsing capabilities on both of these smartphones here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and ensure that all applications are closed out simply by exiting out of them in the multitasking interface. Now let's load them up at the same exact time. As you can see, Safari was brought up first on the iPhone here, and it doesn't actually load anything because it wants you to go somewhere before it loads. Whereas over here on the S3, it immediately went to Google by default. So we're actually just going to take a quick look and load my website. All right, now we're going to tap on both of these at the same exact time. Also note that it is running on the same Wi-Fi network as the iPhone 5, which finished first, as you can see, Right here, it is completely loaded, whereas on the S3, it just finished loading right now. So there is a pretty big lag there between when the iPhone 5 loaded and when the S3 loaded. All right, and let's just go up and do a quick Google search. Now this is just going to be very simple. I'm just going to search for best tech info, and let's go up here on the S3 and do the same thing. All right, here we're going to go on both of these devices at the exact same time. So as you can see, the iPhone 5 finished slightly ahead of the S3 in that test as well, and you'll see that for basically all websites I'm going to load. Now let's just do a couple more here really quick, and let's do YouTube right now. Okay, press and go at the exact same time. Again, the iPhone 5 did finish ahead of the Galaxy S3. Now let's just do a quick search inside of the YouTube mobile website here. All right, here we go. We do have the same search on both phones and we're going to hit go at the exact same time. So as you can see, it was a very close call between those two. The difference wasn't even really noticeable at all. So again, when looking at browser capabilities, the iPhone 5 does appear to be faster than the Samsung Galaxy S3, and I'll actually talk about that more towards the end of this video when we actually go into our SunSpider JavaScript test. So let's just go ahead and exit out of both of these browsers here. You will also notice that when I exit out, the iPhone does finish first ahead of the S3 as far as getting to the home screen goes. So let's press the home buttons right now. As you can see, like I said, the iPhone 5 does finish first. So that's kind of what you'll see with the iPhone 5, which is equipped with Apple's dual core A6 processor. It does perform everyday tasks faster than the Samsung Galaxy S3, which has a quad core processor. So that's somewhat surprising, but it just shows that Apple's efficiency of their A6 processor is somewhat superior to that of the processor that Samsung uses inside of their S3. And now I just wanted to go over a couple of things that I found to be very similar between 
between these two devices. And those are just some of the applications and user interfaces. First, let's start out with the calculator application. Let me find it here over on the S3 and over on the iPhone 5. It is right here inside of the utilities folder. So let's just open up both of these calculator applications and you'll immediately notice that the interface looks practically identical between the two. And just as a speed comparison, the iPhone 5, of course, did finish first when opening up the application. So again, like I said, the interface does look very similar between these two devices for a lot of the different applications that they have and come preloaded with. So let's go ahead and look at the camera app now too as well. So we have the camera over here on the S3 and on the iPhone 5. Okay, so again, like I said, the interface for this looks almost identical between the button to actually take pictures and to also switch between recording video. The option to take a picture while recording simultaneously does look identical between these two. So let's start recording on both of them. And as you can see, we have the button over here on the iPhone 5 to take a picture while recording. And it's the same over here on the Samsung Galaxy S3. So as you can see, we did just take a picture on both of these smartphones while recording. The interface does look very similar for both of these devices across numerous applications. What it all boils down to though is personal preference, whether or not you want a larger four inch display or one that you can easily use with one hand, which has that HD 16 to nine aspect ratio. With that being said though, there's more to the screen than just the size of it. You also have to take into account the quality. So let's go ahead and look at the exact same images on both of these devices here, and you'll notice that the screen is different. Apple's Retina display versus the S3's AMOLED display. So we're gonna load up the Photos app on the iPhone 5 here, and the Gallery app on the S3. And you'll notice that the interface is slightly different here, but I'm going to get my point across with the pictures. So let's look at these really quick. And starting over here on the iPhone 5, we do have a picture of a lion, same picture over here on the S3. And of course it does take up the entire screen on the iPhone 5, whereas on the S3 it only takes up part of the screen because the S3's screen is bigger and it has a higher resolution. But the iPhone 5 does have a higher pixel density, which means it has more pixels per inch, which means that it can display more detail than the S3. However, like I said, the difference is immediately noticeable between these two displays. Whereas on the iPhone 5 here, we have rich detail. On the S3, we have more saturated colors. And even though the iPhone 5 has a 40% higher saturation than both the iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S's retina display, the S3 does beat the iPhone 5 as far as saturation. However, that's it's not necessarily a good thing because you do want colors to be displayed as naturally as possible and also to display as much detail as possible, which is where the iPhone 5 does win in this situation. So just swiping over to this other picture here, let's look at it on the S3, which we have to get to it in a slightly different fashion because again, we have Android on the S3. So like I said, you will notice that the detail on the iPhone 5 is far superior to that of the S3. Let's go ahead and turn up the brightness all the way on both of them so you guys can kind of get a sense for that as well. Because I know some of you will say, well, the iPhone 5 may look better and display more detail because it's brighter. And yes, that is partially true because the S3's backlight isn't as bright as the iPhone 5's backlight, but that also is largely due to the retina display. So let's go ahead and, like I said, turn up the brightness on both of these smartphones here. As you can see, it's already all the way up on the iPhone 5, just due to the auto brightness function and the brightness of the room that I'm recording in. Now on the S3, let's go ahead and turn it all the way up as well. Which as you can see, it doesn't really make too much of a difference on the S3 like I said, because the backlight isn't as bright as on the iPhone 5. All right, so again, comparing these two pictures, we do have a higher saturation on the S3, more detail on the iPhone 5 though, so it just kind of depends on what you want and what you're looking for in your phone, which is what I've been saying this entire review. It, all boils down to personal preference. And now to conclude this video, like I said, I'm just going to run a SunSpider JavaScript benchmark test. And let's completely exit out of all apps on both of these devices here. All right, now that we've done that, we're just going to open up the browser. Here. 
And as you can see, the S3 is struggling to pick up where it last left off before we closed out of the application, whereas the iPhone 5 immediately picked it up. So let's just go ahead and do a quick Google search for SunSpider JavaScript. All right, so let's just search for these at the exact same time on both the iPhone 5 and the S3 iPhone 5 finished far ahead of the S3 in that one, but that's not really what we're here to do. We are going to compare the two in the SunSpider JavaScript test. So now that we're zoomed in here, we're going to run it on both of these at the exact same time. And again, whichever one finishes first will perform better when running the SunSpider JavaScript benchmark test. All right, as you can see, the iPhone 5 is completely done with the test while the S3 is still running it. Again, same exact test on both of these devices just through the standard browser that they come with. So zooming in here on the iPhone 5, again, we did finish far ahead of the S3 with a total of 936.6 milliseconds. So again, we're still running over here on the S3, and I have a feeling it is going to take a while to finish, so let's just let it play through. All right, and as you can see, it finally finished over here on the S3. Let's go ahead and zoom in and compare the two. So for the total over here on the S3, the 1,425.5 milliseconds, whereas on the iPhone 5, we have 936.6 milliseconds. So the iPhone 5 with the A6 processor outperforms the Samsung Galaxy S3 when running this benchmark test. And with that said, in everyday applications, the iPhone 5 also outperforms the Samsung Galaxy S, but is it enough to be noticeable? I think it's definitely something that you can overlook if you really like the Android platform or the bigger screen as opposed to the iPhone 5. And just for a final closing thought, these are both great smartphones. They are the top of the line that are out right now, and they are definitely two of the best you can get. Now, I personally am going to go with the iPhone 5 just because I like it better. I like the quality of the screen better, and I also like the smaller screen, how you can use it in one hand with the HD 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Ratio. However, if that's not for you, definitely go with the S3. And if I didn't go with the iPhone 5, I would go with the S3. However, I definitely like iOS over the Android mobile operating system. So with that said, just be sure to rate this video up if you guys liked it and leave your comments down below in the comment section. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about these two devices and which one you'd pick and why. So again, just let me know down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.